Right, let's talk to Jake Berry, former Conservative Party Chairman. Jake, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. How are you doing? Very well indeed. Uh, was the day improved uh, with the debate last night? What did you make of it? Well, no, I, I watched it. I, I sort of was on my uh, second bottle by the time it finished, so it was all quite quite good fun. We had some friends around. Um, look, for me, I'm, I'm a candidate in this election. It's hard for, for me to be absolutely independent, but I don't think anyone could have watch that and for the key message that our prime minister rishi sunak wants to land is the low party is going to put your taxes up uh, was one that he got over with some style i think from keir starmer's point of view the i the idea he seems wanted to land with the british public is i i'm not a, a, a conservative i'm not a tory i haven't been in government for five years and why i think on balance uh, he's chalked down as having lost that because lost the debate is no one's really that interested in that because every election is about the future and Keir, you know Rishi Sunak he repeatedly got the opportunity to talk about his plans for the future and that's what people are thinking about when it comes to election times and that's why I think he edged it. Do you think he was reluctant Keir Starmer to say what his plans were or do you think he genuinely doesn't know or isn't sure or do you also think that he's he's not great because I've, I've witnessed this at PMQ sometimes he's not necessarily great uh, responding to an immediate question. Yeah, so, I mean, the first thing is his trainee's a barrister. I'm a lawyer myself, and I can tell you that, uh, in my view, barristers tend not to be that good at debating because uh, in court you have a monologue. No one interrupts you. No one challenges what you, you necessarily say while you're saying it. So I think his... Uh, I, mean, I don't know if you know that he used to be uh, head, of the, uh, head of the prosecution service here in the UK. I had heard that. Uh, yeah, I, I've heard it as well. But uh, so barristers tend, even though they're quite good at talking, they don't tend to be quite good when you stick it back at them. And I think he looked very uncomfortable with that. And also, I think there's an element, I don't know whether he doesn't know, I think he genuinely doesn't know what he wants to do when it comes to immigration and asylum and the Prime Minister set out a clear plan. But I think there's a big element, particularly on these £2,000 worth of tax rises that our Prime Minister was talking about, that he just doesn't want to tell you. His entire election strategy is let me get into number 10 because I'm not conservative. And when it comes to push and shove, as you get very near the time, people want a plan for the future and he ain't got one. Well, yeah, let's, the one sort of maybe high point for him, perhaps, a lot of people have noted this one, uh, was on the NHS waiting list. Let's have a look at this. But what Keir Starmer Hang didn't on. mention to you, which you did, Julie... Well, you, you, 7.2 million, they're now 7.5 million. He says they're coming down, and this and, is the guy who says he's good at maths. Yeah, they are, they are now coming down. <laughs> they are now coming down. 7.2 yes. when you said you'd get them down. 7.2 million, they're now 7.5 million. I'd like you to explain how they're coming down. Because they were coming down from where they were when they were higher. 7.2. And they're now <laughs> on their way down. <laughs> they are down, right? Oh. Yes, oh. because the NHS was impacted by industrial action. Oh. And if it wasn't for oh. that, oh. a half oh. a million appointments would have been saved. So it's somebody but, else's fault. So the audience were clapping and cheering and groaning. So, I mean, I don't know what you make of all of that, Jake, but it seemed as though um, people were a bit fed up with, with Rishi Sunak pretending uh, that the reason that the, 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 the waiting list was so long was because of the industrial action. Well, uh, the first thing is they're kind of both right. So uh, uh, waiting list peaked, I believe it was about 7.8 million and they now come down to 7.5 million. So to say that the Prime Minister has brought them down from their peak is absolutely correct. For Keir Starmer also to say that they are still higher than when you said you bring them down is is also correct. So I think actually both of them could have done each other a service by saying we're sort of both right on this. Um, I, I think the audience wasn't laughing at the Prime Minister. I think they were laughing more than clapping when I was watching it, saying that, um, you know, that, that he it was the fault of the doctors, although I do think that is a big part of it. But here's the way he said, well, they've, they've come down from where they were when they were highest. And Keir Starmer, quite, well, he was quite quick. It was about the only decent joke of the night. said, I thought you were meant to be good at math. Yeah. I think they were actually laughing at Keir Starmer's joke, which was quite a good joke. Um, but I think in terms of the, the point, I think they were both right. Yes. I mean, there was also a very interesting exchange about private health care uh, in which Keir Starmer basically said that if one of his loved ones needed private health care because they couldn't get something on the NHS, he wouldn't do it. Have a look at this. But what Keir Starmer Hang didn't on. mention to you, which you did, Julie... Wait, you, you, 7.2 uh, million, they're now 7.5 million. He says they're coming down, and this and, is the guy who uh, yes. says he's good at maths. Yeah, they are. If you had loved ones on a long waiting list for surgery, would you, if you felt that that was the only way forward, use private health care, Rishi Sunak? Yes. Keir Starmer? No. Absolutely no, if your loved one was on a waiting list for surgery.
No. Thank you very um, much. I, I don't use private health. Okay. Um, I use the NHS. Uh, on a straw poll of uh, social media, I think people were rather surprised at that. Um, and many people saying, surely that's not what he would really do. Well, look, I mean, you've got nothing if you've not got your health. And I think all of us would do whatever we can to support our, our loved ones and family. But on, on that issue, I think there's two interesting things. I think I am correct in saying, uh, I don't know if you know this, Mike, but Keir Starmer used to be the head of DPP. I, I was saying it almost as much as he did. I think I'm correct in saying that actually when you are the head of the DPP, you do get a private health care package. I would love to see a journalist put that to Keir Starmer, whether he took advantage of that or yeah. not. Uh, that's one for the future. Look, but this overall thing, so look, I'm, I'm a conservative, I'm a libertarian. I, I don't have, my kids all go to state school, but I oppose the Labour Party to taking away or making it harder for you to send your kids to private school. Because I take, you know, my point is, that basically, if you own your money, you pay too much tax in the first place. But what you're left over with, it's none of the government's bloody business what you spend on. Right. And I think they're starting with private schools, basically saying to people, well, even your hard-earned cash, we're going to try and prevent you spending on what you want private schools. They'll then move to private health care. They'll then move on to telling you what, what car you can drive. We heard from Keir Starmer that he's going to reintroduce all these targets where everyone's going to have to rush out and buy an electric vehicle, electric van. I, I mean, I don't think many people watching this, I haven't have got a non-existent 30 grand in the bank account to go and buy a brand new car. That, that's what Labour do. I mean, if that's what you want, vote Labour. Labour tell you how you can spend your money after they've taxed it to the absolute nth degree in the first place. So, look, whether Keir Starmer uses private health care or not, I, you know, I, I would for my family, because it's my money, I've worked hard, I've paid tax on it, and frankly, I expect to be free to spend it on whatever I want. Yeah, I think so. Um, and as I say, I mean, I'm not sure people actually buy the idea that he would not, if there was a case that, that was required, uh, use private health care if it was necessary. And also, Wes Streeting has already indicated that he thinks in the mod modern Labour Party there's room for reform in the NHS, which may lead to uh, certain things, part th certain parts of it, uh, using well, well, of course, the private well, health care sector. My, I also wonder if Keir Starmer's ever actually been to see his GP. Because all GPs are private providers into the NHS. When the NHS was set up, the Royal College of GPs refused to join it. So if Keir Starmer has been to see a GP, he has, by definition, used some private part of, of the NHS. Look, it's not a credible answer. Look, if, if you had an abscess on your tooth and you're in agony and you couldn't see an NHS dentist, you would pay to go and see a private one if you could afford it. If your child needed an operation and it was impacting their life and the only way you could get it was to pay for it, I think as a parent you'd afford it. I, I, I just don't think it holds water and it seems like Twitter and your audience uh, agree with them. Yeah, absolutely. Jake, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed, Jake Berry, former Conservative Party chairman. We'll be